I'm back on a couch with Danny Buchan because we are very excitedly going to play the Isle of Man TT new PlayStation game as well as talk to Danny about what it's like to not only have a family, be a professional sports person, run a full-time business and just be a general don in Lovely life. intro. Did you like that? That was a well, well put together intro. Yeah. Now having the podcast has really made me criticise intros and that was great. Thanks. Two-time Superstock champion, British Superbike race winner, you've done it all. Done it all. So not won it all yet, though. Not yet. The, <laughs> you are, round Knock Hill, you have won it all. I've won it all, Knock Hill. Not last year, though. Had a couple of fourths last year, not great. We, yeah, that's not like you. No. Rory Skinner did say he was going to smash you up there. Did he? Well, luckily he's not there for you this yeah, year. Yeah, luckily nor, he's gone. Nor Taz. Hasm's there, though. Hasm's quite fast. He though. is ranked. And Dixon's not there either. <laughs> anyway, Anyone else? I've digressed. <laughs> Me, I'm also a knock-kill specialist yeah. in the Superstock yeah. class only, not yeah. Superbike. We're also going to do a time trial and see who's faster on the PlayStation. I'm not going to lie, Danny plays PlayStation all the time. I've got so much more time than you, mate. Yeah, you know, like I don't have having time kids, to play PlayStation. Being involved with a couple of businesses, racing, career, everything else. I actually have so much time to play this game. Yeah, you fire <laughs> this up there and show me your skills. <laughs> and then we'll see who's better at right. playing PlayStation. And are you going to talk to me while I'm playing the game? Yeah. So that's going to really put my lap off. But I probably can do both. Okay. Because well, I'm we'll pretty good at doing both. Multitasking as a motorbike racer. Right. Let's go. Autopilot, right. engage, game start the lap. So I'm going to try and talk to you whilst you're playing Come this on, and give we'll it to me. really test you. What is a normal week for someone that is a professional sports person as well as running so a business? So a normal week for me, always, I always try and uh, pick Mayor up from school. So that's like my first priority week is always to be home for like three o'clock when it's school pick up time. Even like today, as I've said to you earlier, I need to be home by three. Oh, that's what the rush is, I've yeah. seen it. So I always try and get home to pick up the kids and obviously have that time with the kids because although we I only race, it's really hard to get like that time. Um, like I don't want to lose that time with the kids, you know? Yeah. So this is really hard to actually Is it hard? It's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just cracking to a tree. Oh, no, no. But uh, yeah, so I always, first priority for me is spending time with the family. So yeah. having like running a company in the week, like office furniture and things like that, like, People say, oh, it must be really busy. It is busy, but I can do a lot of that from my phone, So, and I can do it from home. So the first priority is always to be at home with the kids and have that time, mainly from like three o'clock till the evening, really, you know, with yeah. them. Obviously that doesn't happen all the time because of work and other commitments. Um, but yeah, it's difficult. It's probably more difficult for Steph because being away racing a weekend, then coming home on a Monday and then having to go to work or do work stuff on a Monday, you know, it's not like most people either race bikes do nothing much in the week, um, so they get that time back. Whereas me, it's quite hard because obviously I'm juggling a few different balls. But what is your job? What is it that you so do outside we, of racing? So Victory Workspace Consultants does like fit out. So like, if for instance, if you took on a new building, you might phone me and say, right, I want office furniture, I want new colours on the wall, I want new carpet, I want new PowerPoints put in different places. So me and Mason Law, that's what we do. We do that together. So a lot of that can be done pretty remotely which is quite easy um, and then on top of that my dad's got an office furniture company which installs office furniture so he supplies the men and the vans and the service of installing now he's got customers like um, government contracts HMRC quite big stuff like that so he's always telling me to retire and just carry on <laughs> that so that he can <laughs> he, he doesn't want to work anymore he wants me to take over um, but again that runs itself pretty much you know that's been going for a number of years now so my input there isn't a whole lot um, and as we've been talking before on the podcast when I retire from racing I think putting the effort we have to put in for racing if I can put that into a business it would be quite no I wouldn't say easy but it'd be quite good um, yeah I've got that focus outside of racing but it's also good for me to have these focuses because for me I feel like when I used to race only like only do racing I felt like I was so over engrossed in it that it was unhealthy and yeah. when I got to a track I'd already been thinking or overthinking about it so it's with the business with the podcast with everything else it's um it's quite nice that I have that that time with that them bits and then when I go racing I'm like fully focused on racing and then when I leave the track it kind of relaxes me again and I'm back into normal life so although it's quite busy at times it's it's the way I quite I actually quite enjoy it how it is. Do you have a long-term plan with how long you want to race for? To be honest with you, I take it each year, each year as it comes, you know. Obviously I've had a big crash this year, so that knocks the, the, the wind out of the sails a little bit, but I actually just say to Steph, we'll just take it each year and and just see, you know, like there's times through the year where I say I'm done with this now because I've 
crashed and hurt myself. Um, but then I'll be looking at live time in five minutes later. So it's never, and I still have that buzz. Like the big thing for me after the crash was I still was looking forward to getting back to talk to me through the crash time. what happened i just i basically had a problem with the rear tire i don't know what that was yet but i crashed 139 mile an hour yeah and broke my sacrum two vertebrae what's your sacrum my foot sacrum is the bone that is i don't know if it's holding your pelvis together but it's like where your tailbone's on you're connected to so yeah i had quite a few injuries with that but the biggest thing was it weren't my fault do you know yeah. if it's your fault you can say well i accelerate too much and next time I just won't accelerate much. Well, that weren't the case. It was no one's fault and nothing that we can change. It, the outcome of it's done. And that was hard. To come back from that was quite hard because you know you can't do nothing different. Yeah. So that was a bit rubbish. But I say, yeah, the answer to the question is I just take each year as it comes and I've still got the motivation there. You know, I still was motivated for Donington. I was still motivated for the preparation for Donington. So to me, that tells me that I still want to race bikes competitively. Um, and yeah, each year, mate. And it's your turn to ask the question. Yeah, this now, I <laughs> get how hard that was now. <laughs> um, with my lack of PlayStation experience as well, it's not Hickey's helping. He's had some big crashes. I feel sorry for him. I noticed you finished ninth. So did I've, I finish ninth? Yeah, I've oh, got to finish ninth no. or better. Um, which so <laughs> why is Hickey so that loose? bike is smashed to pieces? Um, and do you prefer racing or do you prefer doing business stuff? I like racing, obviously love racing. I love meeting people, love talking to people, love riding bikes around. Um, if you ask, ask me that after quite a disappointing weekend at Donington, then I would probably say I prefer the office furniture stuff because it's, um, you, have, you have less peaks and troughs, you know? Like with racing, it's so good and it's so bad. So there's never really a time when you're just like having a a good few months where it's just well there are there are times but there's few and far between so yeah I definitely love racing motorbikes and when I sell furniture I think oh I'm glad I'm racing motorbikes still because this is proper fun but yeah I think it's hard to be racing because there's definitely like the highs are so high yeah which is what we all live for but the lows can be low and like, that is hard when you've got a family like my little girl doesn't give a shit if I race motorbikes or yeah. if I fit office furniture or if I sell office furniture she just wants me to be coming home and spending time with her and that's sounds really morbid and bad but you know that with the job that we do with racing motorbikes you know it does happen and it's so there's always that part to me which thinks right I just want to come home safe yeah and we I spoke with Glenn Owen about it the other day and he was like he doesn't even consider that a BSB because when he does the roads that's like heightened but at BSB it's not it doesn't even think about it and so that's quite a thing for me I'm always like well if I have a good weekend if it's good or bad as long as I'm safe you know and I go home and and kiss the children it don't matter for me so but that, then yeah that's one major difference to like we're very similar ages mm. and I've, we've raced in similar championships all our lives and been friends for a long time but the main difference between me and you is you've got two, two children and a family mm. well two children that you know of <laughs> um, and yeah I've not received any other Father's Day cards just yet yeah how has that changed your life like does that change with racing because it I made me safer at the time I didn't really? know how it was going to affect me yeah, I had this conversation with Jake because obviously recently he's become a dad and it's like it made me think more I don't know if it takes you away from racing so much that you that when you get back on it again the focus things there I don't know but it made me yeah like I felt a bit more like the decisions I was making were probably more like subconsciously rather than on the surface. Yeah. And it made me think a little bit more about how I was racing and trying to improve that side of things. So I I would say that it made me safer, but you know, I've won races as a dad, I've crashed as a dad, so I've had I won the Superstock Championship in seventeen. Um I think part of it well, because I've obviously got no kids. The that, you know of. that I know of. The, um, <laughs> could be some home. Argentinian babies running wow. around. We've yeah, just got we no idea. Um, the thing that I found as I got older was, I think it may be a man thing as well. You definitely mature later as a man, and we were both ninth. Ninth. We're gonna have to have a decider. Have do, right, go back to that. We'll do it again. Now right. we've had a lap. Let's yeah. go back to it because um, I'm feeling it now. I'm vibing. Oh, I'm actually tenth. You've won. Yeah, on, sure. we'll go again. Yeah, you got disqualified. Yeah. I noticed that you definitely you're different to when you're a kid when you're yeah. a kid you just never ever consider consequences or crashing or hurting about yourself crashing. No. Yeah, you literally don't even think about it no but you definitely think about it more once you i think as well not only that you've also crashed 
like will crash a lot yeah. during your racing career and you get sick of hurting yourself like it's not as much when you're young it's like oh it's the first time i broke my collarbone yeah once you broke your collarbone a couple of times you broke your leg and you broke it suddenly all starts Definitely. You just start thinking, I could do without having another broken leg yeah. this year. And what's funny is, like, what I see now as well, which is different with age, is that I look at other people's crashes and think, oh, that's not nice. Yeah. Like, whereas I never used to care. I used to just watch people's crashes and be like, oh, I've had a crash. But I watch like a Mud GP crash or like Poet's Bargro's crash or whoever it might be. And I think, oh, mate, that's savage. Like, God, like, I can't believe he's going to be now away from his family from hot in hospital or... You know, and that, that kind of thing you think, does that affect me on the bike? I don't know. It definitely affects you when it's going wrong. Like when it's going bad, you just think to yourself, like over the weekend at Donington, it was like bloody hell. I remember just thinking, I wish I could just get in my van and drive home now. Like I'm having the worst weekend. I don't want to be here. Let alone put my life on the risk, let alone like all the rest of it. But then you have a good race and you're like, right, that's good. Yeah. So it's really funny. Yeah, you have like all these emotions that are going on. And it's, I don't know if other people have it, I don't know, but it's definitely something for me. And because I've got so much stuff outside of my life happening, you know, it does, obviously you could think to yourself, well, I don't really need this, but, yeah. and do you question yourself on it sometimes, but I have such a motivation still to race and to want to win. And that still like, burns deep inside me. And that's something that's always been like, well, yeah, I still love it. I still want to do it. You know, like Steph even says to me, like, make sure you like you do a good job like, imagine your, your kids she said to me last year do you want your kids looking at their dad and being like oh that's my dad he's running around at the back of the grid <laughs> she's genuinely said that to me and i was like that's really good actually because yeah like imagine that you don't want that you're making so, proud yeah yeah but still love it still want to race i'm obviously now in a break we've got knock hill coming up and i can't wait to get there and test and and to put on a good weekend and have three good results and that's something that's still burning deep within in me and that kind of have, hasn't faded yet, you know? So yeah. that still tells me that I want to race and I'm still good enough. I just need to have a bit of luck at the minute. And we're obviously playing the Isle of Man TT game like last, I crashed there Did twice. You? Have, would you ever do the Isle of Man? No, the Isle of Man TT is not for me. I love the event. Obviously I'm supportive of the event. I think it's great and what it does to the economy and everything else is great. But for me, it's just not my cup of tea. Yeah, I've, I've been and watched it once and stood trackside and was just like, this is like incredible. And if you haven't been, obviously you've been before, but anyone watching this, like, go and watch it. It is just eye-opening how fast they go. Can't, no matter how many times people tell you, until you go and stand there on Bray Hill and bikes are coming towards you. That's where I stand first time. It blows your mind, yeah. doesn't it? It's, you just can't... Get, you can't comprehend how a bike can go through a road that quick. Not, and how close you are to it. You just, that doesn't happen when you're at BSB or MotoGP no. or anywhere. You don't get that close to bikes coming past. And I think people literally think that when the riders put on their helmets because they can't see their face that they're not human but they are and it's mad where was that that then? was nice p1 p1 uh, is it is it because you dropped down obviously yeah, earlier did. there you go mate set the uh you've set the bar high now. yeah what's zero zero two mean no i don't get it i don't get it but yeah so no not a bit of me mate what about you would you ever do it i, I flipped the question back on you you have flipped it back on me so i went to the isle of man for about seven years in a row one of my best friends lee johnston so i used to go with him um, just to watch him and as a friend and support him. And then there was a... That was nice. Thanks. There was a time when I went to the Northwest every year and the Northwest was the one race where I maybe thought I could, I could potentially do this. do this. Cause there's the Isle of Man, not only is it dangerous and it's a, a road race and whatever else, there's, it's a commitment to do it. You can't just mess about no, it. You You've got to go and learn the track. Yeah. yeah. Like Hickey before he went, used to go <laughs> all the time to learn the track and yeah. Glen Irwin. And, so, like, I didn't fancy that commitment anyway of doing this. We got this. sponsored, boat trips. Yeah, <laughs> three hundred and fifty quid. I'll be there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, but the northwest, you can pretty much go without. Like, I, I know the northwest without even yeah, uh, racing around. Yeah, you know yeah. the track. And so that was one I thought about. But it was actually one year I went to watch. Ben Wilson was there, who was at a similar place in his career as me, like racing in British Championship. Went there with probably a similar mindset and he hit a i think he hit a roundabout and crashed yeah. and broke his leg bad wasn't it? really bad and got, that was just what brought it home to me i was like yeah. god that just doesn't happen at bsb you don't just hit a roundabout no and it just completely put me off in one it was just one crash that put me off i thought i just don't need that i've enjoyed racing i think a lot of tt racers because they go and do it then that's the next buzz and they've sort of like pushed their 
dopamine and exactly yeah. they literally have to another level whereas at bsb it's still a buzz for me well still was a still was a buzz yeah it was a buzz racing at bsb and i got a thrill doing that i didn't need that to go really to the next level and yeah. do that so yeah that was my my thought process but so the closest we get is playing the game exactly and it is actually really good like even the speed look at the speed do you know what's weird like having crashed super bikes quite a few times the crashes are so realistic you keep saying that don't you about it you're it really feel, impressed but by the crashes. i am don't you feel like i feel like i'm crashing <laughs> i try not to look at the crashes it's bringing back it doesn't matter it's impacting me <laughs> i can't race psychological damage i can't race yeah. emotional damage i'm emotional i'm not gonna lie i think i'm doing a lot better this time. i think you're beating me yeah I, don't I think, think I finished I am, at 4808, isn't it, or something, more time? We're going to have to get an action. I crashed it. Yeah, that's good for me. That was really good for me. Mm, I think that's good. I think it, mate, I think you've beat me, though, by quite a lot, because I think it was 4808. We'll have to have a look. On this timer. So, oh, yeah. going it's back going to down. BSB this year, you've yeah. distracted me there. That timer's going down as well, so that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Oh. oh, no, right, that's game over now. <laughs> what are your plans for the rest of the year? Because, so... You're obviously going to a championship yeah. thinking that this is the be-all and end-all. Yeah. Um, but it's been a bit of a shaky terrible start. start the... Terrible start. But my plan is just to have three good races at Knockhill, yeah. take every round as it comes and just try and build and just keep having strong results. You know, there's The new format this year means that the um, championship's got like double points in the last two rounds, I believe it is. Yeah. So that's a good lot of points you can win back. But... Does that change your mindset on how you approach the championship? Not at the minute for me, because I've had because I've missed a complete round, and obviously you missed the well DNF two races at um, Silverstone, so I've missed five races. So now all it is for me is Donington was just to get back into it. Really, I needed some some good results there just to get back into it more from myself, um, for more of a confidence thing really. So. For me now, it's just to hit up, knock it all, have a good race, have a good weekend, and then just keep building on it. And I guess get as many points as I can on the board. That's literally the only motivation now, is just keep getting as many points as I can, you know? That's literally it. I've got no championship hopes or anything like that, because that will sort itself out. But yeah, just win as many races as I can. And then what happens is you, we all play this game of musical chairs every yeah. year, and then the musical chairs start. So really now, as daft as this is, we're at round four or five yeah. coming up, four, Round five three. and six. Right, well, four, five and yeah. six coming up next. Yeah. Once those next three races are quite crucial because it's whoever's performing at those races gets the best rides for the year Starts after. talking, doesn't it? You're only as fast as your last, last race. race. That's all P10. people think about. So we need to be moving up there. A good knock kill could just yeah. put you back on the... But then everyone just goes, oh yeah, he's only quick round knock kill. So <laughs> I need to have a good knock kill, <laughs> a good <laughs> brand, everyone. Oh, he's good. you're good round knock kill, aren't you? And Cadwell. Oh, yeah. well, I was going to say, yeah. it took the words so out of my mouth. It's kind of like, I just need to have a good end of the season. And good that Alton. sort of stuff sorts itself out. You're good out. at Alton as well. Good at Alton. I'm good. I had a good re re results That's with brands. That's most of the tracks. Which tracks Fuck. aren't you good at? Well, I've not had too good of results. Really weirdly, Snetterton, I'm fast round Snetterton, but I've never had three good results there. Weirdly. I got took out last year by Vickers, went further back in the grid, had issues and then had three bad races there. But I love the circuit and I'm fast there. So that's another strange one. But yeah, I mean, at the minute, just take each track as it comes, just get the most points we can. Um, and then, yeah, as you know, like look at options for next year, whether it's stay with the same team, whether it's moved to a different championship. I love the idea of Ooh, Endurance World Championship. What was that? I was yeah. feeling like no, I love the idea you? of Endurance World Championship, but the dates always clash. So yeah. for me, I'm at a point in my career where I just want to enjoy racing. Yeah. And but it's it's one of them options where I actually had an option to go Endurance World Championship this year, but I decided to stay in British Championship because I want to get that done and I feel like I love racing in British Championship. I love the tracks, I love the fans. I go home to my bed on a Sunday. So I still have that love and the, and the, the passionate part of me still wants to be successful in BSB. So until I do that, I don't know if I would, but yeah, yeah. I've always loved the idea of endurance world championship because a, it's a world championship. B, it's a different, pro it's a different aspect of racing, isn't it? Like they're long races, yeah, twenty four hour. I probably wouldn't want to do it once I'm doing it. Yeah, probably hate myself for it, but yeah, I like the idea of that as well. So I don't know what the future holds for me in terms of like my actual career, but I would definitely like to have a, a couple of competitive seasons at Endurance World Championship. Yeah. Well, Danny, you've smashed me at PlayStation, I think. Um, I've absolutely smashed you, To be you, honest, mate. I didn't actually want to win because I feel like if I won, then it looked like I played PlayStation. Well, you do, time. though. Yeah, that's all you do at home. Taz definitely will beat me at this. And Brad Taz Ray. sits and vapes, doesn't he, and plays Vapes, mainly. Just Monster and Vapes. 
Monster Vapes and PlayStation. Yeah, that's what, that's that's all the he key does. to a British Speedway Championship. Is that it? That's yeah. what yeah. I'm wrong And here. milk and cookies, he has them at 10 and yeah. then moves on to the Monster and Vapes. <laughs> yeah. So that wraps up this video. Thank you very much for watching. If people enjoyed this, I feel like it's a new concept. I'm going to do a double thumbs up. Playing PlayStation and... Talking. It's quite relaxed, isn't it? Yeah. Enjoyed well, it. it's not really because it really hindered my performance. Well, I want to play... Yeah. We'll do it again sometime. But did you win that time. race? I... I think I did. I want to keep this video video going now. You're well, to people are already <laughs> clicking off now. You've already ruined it. Now they're clicking off. Yeah. Like and subscribe <laughs> and we'll see you in the next one.